It's Thursday, June 18th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, You Alone Are God, and our scripture is Psalm 86. No pagan god is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name. For you are great and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God. The Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures declare that the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph is one God. And he's alone in that. There is no other true God. The Shema, found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, is like the Christian affirmation of faith, what we believe about God. It's the basic prayer every Orthodox Jew prays, and it begins this way. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Jesus affirmed that first tenet of faith to the Pharisees who came to question him. Mark chapter 12, Jesus replied to them, The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And now for the part that gets every Christian preacher in deep and very hot water for being faithful to the veracity of the word of God. To believe this, that only Yahweh is God and there is no other, that he alone is God, makes God an exclusive God, as opposed to inclusive. To say it one other, perhaps more offensive way, to believe that only Yahweh, Jehovah God, is the true God and there is no other, is to say, since Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, and the father that Jesus said he came from, if that isn't your God, you have a false God. Hello, I'm Russell, and I'm a 21st century cultural outcast because I believe in an exclusive relationship with God, and that begins with the claim that Yahweh is alone the creator and sustainer of all life. He alone is God, and persons who will not acknowledge him as Lord of all will not receive eternal life. They will be lost forever. So, What does this kind of thinking, that there is one and only one God, exclude? Well, it excludes at least these few realities. Number one, it excludes all religions that do not worship the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, as sovereign, in charge, and to be obeyed and worshipped. Secondly, it excludes all faith that is universal, supposing that God approves of all persons regardless of faith and practice. Thirdly, it excludes all faith that includes God but does not worship him with all heart, mind, soul, and strength. And fourthly, it excludes all faith that makes the cross of Christ less than necessary for the forgiveness of sin, which is entirely necessary for every human being's redemption. Now, that's not very ecumenically welcoming or politically palatable these days, but I hold to these statements like the great reformer Martin Luther said when he was accused that his faith statements were heretical. And I quote, unless I'm convinced by proofs from scripture or by plain and clear reasons and arguments, I can and will not retract, for it is neither safe nor wise to do anything against conscience. Here I stand, I can do no other. God help me. Amen. That got Martin Luther defrocked, stripped of his clergy credentials, and excommunicated or kicked out of the church. The church leaders wanted to have him executed, so he was hunted like a criminal heretic for the rest of his days. I have a word for Martin Luther's persecutors, in hindsight. How's that working for you? It's only been 500 years and grace alone is still standing. Let's pray together. Father, you require your people to be faithful. We understand that from scripture which shows us every ill that befell Israel was because of their unfaithfulness. And just as warfare requires faithfulness on earth, so the spiritual battles that are conducted in prayer require our steadfast commitment to the truth that you are God alone. 
Not only are we not God, nobody else is either. For you today, in this pluralistic 21st century, everyone's faith and ideas are valued as equal. And the Christian that falls for that will never stand for anything else in God's kingdom. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.